Hello everyone. My council is completely normalized. All the faders are at unity gain. All the gear is unplugged from it. All my outboard gear is off. Everything's off except for the tape machine, the console, my studio monitor so I could hear it, and the Tascam DA3000. All the faders are at unity and everything is unplugged from my patch bay. If you look right here, these two cables, that's the left right mix bus going to the Tascam DA3000. So what we're going to do is we're going to hear these tracks and not pay attention to the song so much as the production, the way they recorded the tape back in the day. And then I'm going to mix it off tape using only outboard gear that they would have had in the racks of that era, in the studio of that era. So it's sort of like going back in time and it should be interesting to hear how it turns out. Um, so let's get started. Here is the tape I have queued up on my JH24 and we're gonna go through the tracks that they recorded here. So we have Kick In, Kick Out, One Snare Mic, An Overhead Left, A Tom Mic, and An Overhead Right. Now this Tom Mic, um, what I'm picturing from what I hear is they put one mic between two toms. And uh, that's on track five. So six drum mics. Then channel seven, they have a backup vocal. There's nothing on eight or nine. 10 and 12 are a guitar solo. 13 is bass. 15 and 16 is stereo keys left and right. Number 19 is a single guitar, a rhythm guitar, and a melody guitar. Channel 21 is vocals. Channels 22, 23, and 24 are the same thing as this stereo guitar, uh, solo guitar left and right, but it sounded like they did distant miking on it, like they set up three mics further in the room, and that's a left, center, and right. So if you picture that, you have a guitar player, and this was all live at, off the floor. You could hear the bleed, and they recorded this all together. So what it is is they had a guitar player playing into a guitar amp, playing a solo. That guitar amp was stereo mic'd up close with a left and a right microphone. And then they had three microphones back in the studio, left, right, and center. At least that's how I have them panned. I don't know what they did but I'm panning them left, right, and center. And uh, I'm not going all the way 100%, just, uh, just giving it a little spread. So when you hear this guitar solo, the left and right tracks, these are the distant, distant mics for it. And this is the lead vocal, and then just a basic rhythm guitar. So as far as miking, not a lot. Six mics on the drums, one bass mic, stereo keys, in a stereo solo guitar in the vocals. That's it. That's the entire song. No computer, no upward gear. Let's go back in time and hear how they track this band. And here it is.
Okay, my friends, here we go. I took about 25 minutes just to dial in some compression and EQ, and we're gonna listen to that right now, and then I'm gonna show you what I did, and we're gonna hear each instrument set individually with how I compress and EQ'd it. All right, so let's hear it first. start with the drums so what I have going on is a global reverb the PCM 60 returning to channels 27 and 28 and what I sort of did there is I sprinkled it over what I wanted to add size to because it's not a long decaying reverb it's just more to add space and ambience and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna I'm gonna mute that to show you what it's like with it and without it but first we're gonna hear just the drums. And let me show you what, tell you what I did with the drums. Kick in, I added a DBX160VU. Snare top, I added a DBX160VU. The overhead left and right, um, all I did was use a little bit of EQ on the console, just um, some top end, 10K, that's it. Uh, 3 dB of 10K, that's it. And, uh, sorry, 4 dB. And that's it for the drums. Besides that, I have the PCM60 on the drums, uh, some verb. So let's hear just the drums here. Okay, so that is the drums. And again, DBX160VU on kick and snare. And I also wanted a little bit of snap on the top end and a little bit more detail on the kick. So what I did was as I added 550A EQs. Again, I'm using everything that they might have had in their racks of that era. I didn't use anything. There's no mix bus compression on the console. I don't have my Allen Smart or anything dialed in. I'm not using any um, drum bus. Uh, I, I use my API 2500 a lot on the drum bus. I'm not doing that. I'm just dialing in, sprinkling some compression EQ and some verb over the tracks and we're hearing, that's it. So that's the drums. Now let's go to the bass guitar, channel 13. I have the gate stay level. And um, what else do I got on that? That's it, just the gate stay level. And here is the bass. There was the only rhythm guitar on channel 19. And this I have um, an 1176 and it was a little, it, it was kind of bright and he's using some kind of effect, almost like a chorus in some parts and other parts he's not. He's playing, he, he's strumming it very lightly and then on some parts he's, 
he's plucking strings harder to accentuate that's great but um it sounded a little too bright in some, some parts so i added a 550 an original api 550 and here is that center guitar <laughs> So you could hear there exactly like I said, some uh, part of the progression, he's plucking very hard, other he's just hardly even strumming it. And he's sort of just adding feel to the song, which is very cool. Uh, and again, a little bit of PCM 60 on that, and that's it. All right, now we got the keys left and right. And there is a volume difference, so it is a stereo pan left and right. I have a little PCM 60 dialed in, and I have the DBX 162 on those. And if I had two different compressors on it, I would match the volumes on the compressors. But since the DBX-162 is a stereo compressor with only one set of controls, I have to match the volumes on the fader. And that's what I did. Let's hear where we're at with that. And I do have some PCM-60 on that as well. Here are the keys. <laughs> Again, that is the DBX 162 a stereo compressor on there. I really use my DBX compressors a lot. Um, and whether it's the 160 VU, the 162, or just DBX 160 XTs, I got a pair of A's. They just work, they sound great, they're easy to use. So that means a lot to me. I want something I can just use just dial in real easy all right they've been around for a long time all right so now we're gonna go through oh yeah let's go through what else we got on the song and we have if I, if I go to the 150 mark is where guitar stereo solo guitar will kick in and I'll tell you what I did with that okay so the stereo guitar channels 10 and 12 PCM 60 dialed in returned into channel 27 28 which is hard pan left and right um, and then they had those those three mics that they had in the room distance far back, which is 22, 23, and 24. I'm gonna leave those off for now. I'm gonna put those in and see what they add. I have them panned 60% left and right, and then one up the center. So let's hear the solo guitar when it kicks in. Stereo solo guitar. While that was playing, I added the room mics that they had on there. So let's put everything back together. And uh, the, the main vocals, we'll get to those in a minute. Let's hear the mix. And then I'm gonna take out the PCM60 so you could hear it without it. 
And then when we get to the vocals, I'll, I'll show you what I did with the vocals. to show you how much just a little bit of ambience could add to a mix now we're gonna go to just the vocals all right so we're gonna take everything out except for the vocals and I did discover on uh, ch channel 18 track 18 he had a low box harmony that I didn't know was on there so there's the main vocals on channel 21 there is a low vocal harmony just during the course on channel 18, and then there is a high vocal harmony on channel seven. Um, and so for those backup harmonies, I have the DBX 160 A's on the backup harmonies. And then for the lead vocals, I have an 1176 and a Pultec on the lead vocals, but I am also adding a little bit of effect. So what am I doing? I'm dialing in some PCM 60, which is hard pan left and right. And then on echo, that's on Echo 1. On Echo 2, I have going to my Effectron, and that is coming right up channel 26, mono up the center. So I like to do that. Stereo reverb spread, Effectron up the center, which is sort of adding like a little doubling echo slap. So let's hear these vocals. All my life I've dreamed of Standing in the city lights and seeing those tall, tall buildings living a rich man's life. And now that I've grown older, seen what there is to see. Take me back down south right now so I can live wild and free. And I hear the deep from the south okay so let's go through I'll just show you the outboard really quick I have the PCM 60 and what did I do here it's on room not hall size pretty big but then I have a short reverb time and I did have the contour engaged. I don't know, it just adds a little puffiness that I like. The Effectron was on the lead vocals, tucked down in the mix, up the center. That's the only thing the Effectron was on. The PCM60 is on Echo 1. That's Echo 1's master. And then it sends it out to the PCM60, and then I return it to channel 27 and 28. The Effectron was on channel 21, Echo 2. That's Echo 1, that's Echo 2, Q1, Q2. So I got four AUG sends on this console. Echo 2 dialed in through Echo 2's master send to the Effectron. A mono return to channel 26, straight up the center, panned up the center. All right? Now, Kick and snare, we'll do this quick. Kick and snare were the DBX-160V use. It's a great compressor, great. Uh, 160VU, also kick and snare. I have uh, hand-wired 550As on. 
Didn't really need them, but yeah, I liked what it did. Took out a little bit of four, added a little bit of some low and some high. Sounded good. All right, and then the stereo keys is the DBX 160 VU right here. All these are off. Everything else in that rack is off, all right? So that center guitar where he was uh, strumming lightly and then plucking in uh, louder, adding ambience and stuff, that's this 1176 and this old API 550. This one wasn't used, but... Oh, no, sorry. That's the one I used, not that one. So it's this API 550. I put that in the wrong spot. All right, so that was that center guitar. 1176, 550. Like I said, we're going to use stuff that they would have used back in that era. Um, backup vocals, the low harmony vox and the high harmony vox are 160As. Um, what else did we have? The solo guitars, DBX 160 XTs. Bass guitar was the star level, stay level, sorry, gate stay level. Lead vocals were this top 1176. I could really use about four more of these. Um, they just sound great and they work. So lead vocals was this top 1176 and this pull tech that I had dialed in. And if I took this out, you would notice it. The vocal got more nasally and um, stuff like that. This really added some cool fluff. And uh, this is not was not used. I just turned it on. So that is it. That I mean, that's pretty much everything. Just a couple compressors, a couple EQs, and um, nothing else is on. I was going to use my Dynamite, but didn't feel the need. At the 25-minute mark, I felt like, eh, close enough, sounds good. Let's roll with it.